Everyone is talking about N8N at the moment. I'm going to explain why that is and what are the real differences between N8N and Make.com. This video is relevant for both beginners and advanced users. I'll be going through the pricing of each of these platforms, the learning curve, what each of them are like to use, the available integrations and apps of each of them, advanced features, and of course, the hot topic of AI agents. At a high level, Make.com is best for beginners. It has a very visual interface. It's quite powerful, but it does abstract a lot of the coding concepts, so it's a lot easier to use. They have well over 2,000 integrations out of the box, and it's quite easy to get set up with lots of these. Make.com is actually quite affordable, especially when you compare it to the likes of Zapier. However, it can get quite expensive if you're using a lot of operations. I'm going to talk about pricing later because there are a few things you need to keep in mind. N8N is simply more powerful and more flexible in a lot of situations, but it's more technical and it comes with a steeper learning curve. There's two ways you can use N8N. You can either use it via their cloud service where you can pay them directly. The starter plan has 2,500 workflow executions, which are end-to-end -end runs of a scenario, whereas make.com is based off number of operations. So every time a module is hit within make.com, that counts as an operation. Whereas, as N8N point out here, what takes 10,000 operations in a competing tool, i.e. make.com, can often be done with a single execution. You're limited on your number of active workflows. These are ones that are running automatically. So if you're manually running workflows, you can have as many of those as you want, even on the starter plan. The big draw of N8N is that they have a community edition. They refer to this as a basic version, but in reality, this version has almost all of the features of N8N Cloud. You can use online services like Render or Alessio or DigitalOcean to host your instance of N8N online directly. Or you can even run this on your own computer if you have the technical skills. The ability to self-host is very powerful, not only for cost, but for data security reasons. So you could sell N8N to enterprise clients, for example, that have very strict data security policies. N8N also has over 1,000 integrations out of the box, and it's also super flexible and customizable, so you can effectively integrate with whatever APIs you want. You can also use the HTTP request within make.com, to connect with virtually any API, but you've got a lot more flexibility and options when doing it via N8N. But the biggest reason why N8N has gained so much traction recently is its AI agents. They've got one of the best implementations of no-code AI agents on the market currently, and its powerful features even blow tools like Relevance.ai out of the water in some respects. As of recording this, Make.com are currently playing catch-up with their AI agents because they have those features in development. They have quite a good integration with OpenAI assistants, which can do tool calling of other workflows. So check out the link in the description if you want to have a look at that in more detail. But overall, it's not as capable as the N8N equivalent. Overall, Make.com is a lot easier to use. I have this blogging system workflow in both Make.com and N8N. For the most part, they do the same thing. And both of these blueprints are available within our community. Even the user interface of Make.com is just so much easier to explain than when you're going through it within N8N. Not only that, Make.com also tries its best to abstract technical concepts where possible. For example, if you're selecting an Airtable base, for example, you can drag and drop that in and you see it in a box like so. It's trying to wrap that in its own little UI element. Once you start with N8N, you are effectively jumping straight into using JavaScript within your automations. For example, this JSON variable is a reference to the data from the previous node. And this is doing the same thing as this make.com scenario. So even a pretty basic thing like that just turns out to be more complicated in N8N. But within N8N, you have the power of JavaScript and you could create much more complicated expressions generated by ChatGPT, for example, and dump it straight into the text box as you see it here. This is a relatively basic example, but you could go very far with this concept. Since Make are trying to keep things relatively simple, they're missing advanced features that are present within N8N. For example, within N8N, you can have a scenario that has multiple input triggers. In this example, we have a blogging workflow, but you could trigger this on a schedule, as you see here, you could trigger it from Airtable via this webhook, or you could trigger it via an AI agent using this AI agent workflow. And it then also has a key feature which allows you to converge workflows together. In one of our other versions of this blogging blueprint, you can optionally run this perplexity researcher. There are a lot of times where you might want to only run part of a flow at certain times. 
or based on certain settings. In this case, if this part of the flow is run, then in order for us to get that data back into the main flow, we have to use variables to basically converge that data back. It's quite awkward and it's just a bit of a workaround. This kind of feature is available out of the box within N8N, but it's more technical to actually merge fields together like this, which is likely why it's not available as an option within make.com yet. A big advantage of N8N is that you can use code directly within the scenario. So you can run custom JavaScript or Python code without having to call an external service like zero code kit or build ship. When you're using a no code tool, you will sometimes just come across some issues that would just be so much easier to solve with code and you could get ChatGPT to generate that code for you. N8N also has far better execution history, retesting scenarios, pinning data to make it a lot easier to test scenarios again and again without waiting for the external trigger source. These are all features that are badly missing from make.com. If you're an advanced user, these are super handy features. As for AI agents, as mentioned previously, N8N's AI agent implementation is particularly impressive. We have a bunch of these agents on our channel with more on the way. An AI agent is a language model with access to tools and you could chat with this via Telegram or Slack or WhatsApp and then give it access to other workflows, other external services and APIs, and this can do a lot. They're very powerful and N8N can even handle multi-agent workflows quite well. Currently, make.com's best semi-native version of AI agents is via using OpenAI assistance. This is a special module within make.com which does a lot more than a standard module. This OpenAI assistant module is able to handle calls to the assistant, it's able to automatically call external tools that the AI agent calls, and this happens all behind the scenes. But overall, it's not as capable as the N8N equivalent. But make.com has an AI agent in development. We're not sure when it's gonna be released, and we'll have to see how it performs. Make.com is great value if you have a lot of small workflows that do not use a lot of operations. As I mentioned, an operation is every time one of these modules is hit. If you're using something like an iterator, then it's every time it's hit within those iterators. If you have a workflow that runs reports or does website scraping, for example, it could use thousands of operations in one workflow. The easiest way to get started with N8N is to sign up for their cloud plan, but it can get a bit expensive if you have a lot of active workflows. If you want to really save on costs, as mentioned earlier, you can self-host N8N, but there is a bit of a technical overhead with doing so, like for example, if you run into issues or have issues with software updates. Should you use make.com or N8N? Really, the best platform is the one that you will use. Both of these are highly capable systems. You can run complex scenarios with both of them, but there is just a higher technical overhead with N8N in comparison to Make. A member of our community recently said, don't spend weeks migrating your scenarios to N8N just to save 10 dollars in operation costs. If you're having success with one of the platforms then just stick with it unless you have a good reason to switch. But you don't have to choose one or the other. N8N and Make.com play very well together. For example, in the social sharing aspect of this blueprint, we're calling a Make.com webhook and we're using the easy integrations that Make.com has with all of these social networks instead of connecting to them all within N8N. If you already have workflows and connections already set up within Make.com, you can easily use these in combination with N8N. If you're using Make.com and you're running into technical limitations with that platform, you could easily farm out some of the more advanced features into a separate N8N workflow and let that handle the more technical aspects of the scenario. My recommendation overall is that if you're a beginner, if you're not very technical, if you have a small team, or if you have lots and lots of workflows that are relatively low volume, then make.com is a fantastic solution and it's a very good starting point. You can jump to N8N later on if you need to for more technical operations. But there are other reasons why N8N might be the best option for you to just jump straight into. For example, if you are a developer, it's less abstracted, which is what a developer will want and it's more powerful as a result of that. If you're an advanced user of automation tools, if you have big workflows, if they're very high volume, then I'd highly recommend N8N is probably the best option for you. If you're using AI agents, then N8N is the best solution currently. They even have this internal chat window, which you could embed externally on a website, for example. If you want to really save on cost, or if you have to be really tight on data security, such as if you're selling to enterprise clients, then self-hosting N8N is just simply the way to go. Which automation platform are you currently using? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community, where you'll get access to all of our automation templates and AI agents. You can use our agent tools and triggers as building blocks to really quickly create powerful AI agents. We have all these courses and more on the way. 
And if you want support, you can talk to us directly via our live workshops and through our active discussion boards.